Okay, now how do we start this? Well, first things first, Izuku does end up going into the Dark Souls universe via that damn broken pendant. The only thing is, when he does arrive, he actually is in front of Martorius and Sif. And, of course, Artorius is wondering, what's a kid doing here? This being 14-year-old Izuku. And Sif, obviously, she's kind of hesitant and a little weary of Izuku. But that's neither here or there. It's wondering where they are. Izuku, being a pretty much an innocent bystander, Artorius has no choice but to really protect him with Sif. When it's finally uh, safe-ish, Izuku does try to explain what happened, especially the fact that while he's being attacked by the sludge villain, he did pick up this broken pendant. Of course, Otorius doesn't know that, uh, wow, you are Really not supposed to be here, but hmm, why are you here? This is when he starts hearing the voices. And he realizes, oh, this could mean a lot of things, but my head cannon says, I possibly didn't win. So he looks at Izuku, and of course, Izuku is highly intimidated considering the sheer scope of Sif and Artorius. But this is when uh, Izuku is very surprised when. How would you like to be trained by me? Of course, Izuku is wondering. What do you mean by training? Who are you? I told his president, You don't know me? N no. I'm Tor Torius. Huh. Strange. Everybody knows me. Even Sib is surprised, but also feels insulted. But Izuku was like, okay, so, he, so you can train me, but, but why would you? Uh, let's just say, I see a hero in you. Izuku, hearing that for the first time, is all for it. And thus, while Torius and Siv are dealing with... Creature of the, uh, creatures of the Abyss. <laughs> they are also training Izuku. Which, yeah, considering that great sword is fucking massive, as well as Izuku's spindly body, and it, it takes a while for Izuku to really get the hang of wielding any kind of weapon. But the true test is when Izuku has to actually execute someone. Or a better word is pretty much killing something that he would deem as a sentient being. Or someone who, yeah, is just a person. Causing him to hesitate and get injured. Torius is, of course, worried about Izuku, but also like, damn, this is taking too long. You can hear the voices in his head. Him trying to cling onto the last shreds of sanity he has before it completely consumes him. But then again, he's... You know what? Fuck it. I cannot risk this kid's life. Yes, he may want to be a hero, as it seems, but he is clearly not ready. 
So what he's not doing is going along the lines of the actual cannon. And he does end up bringing Izuku and Sif with him. Even though he is starting to slowly slip into pure madness, he is able to deal with it to an extent. While Izuku, he's noticing the changes. Seeing how instead of the more dignified and refined sword style that Rikorius is known for, at least from what he's been, uh, you know, exposed to. It's becoming more animalistic, more rage, feel, instinct, div. But it's only when it's the time for the final boss, Artorius is ready to take on this menace when he realizes I can't do this. Which, yes, he pushes Izuku and Sif out of the way and guards them away. That beautiful shield. Sacrificing his sword arm. And, yeah, you can imagine. Izuku, Sif, they're wondering what the hell just happened. Sif, of course, she's terrified. She's wa wondering why did he do that. Izuku, realizing he just did it to protect us. Of course, Sif is no duh. But then Izuku starts naming things that he knows that have been changing. His demeanor, his mannerisms, and shit like that. Sif starts to catch on. Like, wait, he wasn't protecting us from the big balls. He's protecting us from himself. Izuku, Sif, they realize what they have to do. They're going to have to save the princess. Find Artorius. And hopefully they can do both. They do not get to do both. Is it cool? Of course. When he and Sif do end up finding Artorius again. He's, uh, he's barely able to recognize them as he slowly descends further. Last thing he says to Izuku and Sif was to take care of each other. And this is how <laughs> the notorious Abyss Walker fight begins. They have two choices. One is run. Two is to put Artorius to rest. Which means Izuku has no choice. But to kill his master. And Sif has to kill her great companion. This fight is terrible. Izuku still not wanting to finish the job. Sif still, she doesn't want to do it either. While Torius, he has no qualms anymore about Finishing them off. All the cuts, the slashes, the broken ribs. And considering how hard Artorius is fighting, Izuku knows he isn't really holding back. Though Sif, yes, she knows, like, no, something's not right here. Izuku just pointing towards the dangling arm. Realizing that's the arm he used to push them, and that arm is broken. So not only is Artorius technically fighting at full strength, he's kind of nerfed because of that damn arm being broken. So Izuku, Sif, they end up double teaming him. 
They are, they are harnessing the power of their love for Artorias. And to an extent, it does start to work. They do have him on the ground. And Izuku just barely hesitates enough to stab Artorias in the chest, killing him. He is hurt. He is full of tears and anger, realizing uh, I can't believe this all happened because of his mission. All because of his loyalty. He may not know the full story of Artorius. But the one he ended up being with, the one he's seen was exposed to. He sees him as a hero, someone who fought not only physical battles, but mental ones, all because of this abyss. So Izuku he takes his sword, looks at Sif, to her, we are finishing this. And that's how it goes. They are slashing and cutting through every single enemy that comes across them. But they don't care who it is. Izuku's hesitation is gone because he wants this over and done with. For Izuku, he's been gone for easily 10 months already. That's how much time he was able to spend with Sif and Artorias. So, Izuku has, does know how to fight. He has built up bulk and muscle, all this. Fighting skills, yes. But the nerve to actually finish the fight didn't truly come out until he knew he had no choice but to finish off his own master. And without that inhibition, Izuku is a force to be reckoned with. As far as him using magic, yes, he does use pyrokinesis in paying homage to his father, but also he uses healing to make sure that he can, and Sid can stay in the fight for as long as they can without stopping. He is angry. He is hurt, and he wants this mission to be over and done with so he can possibly find a way home. And when it's time to finally face him, the king, Izuku is all too ready to finish watering before it started. And Sif, them both being side by side. Izuku mounts Sif and they go charging in. They are doing combo moves. They are trying their best to stay out of reach as well as deal as much damage as possible. Izuku is going for the tendons, the knees, ankles, help the nape of the neck. Anything that he can see as a weakness, he is going for it. And he's going with the ferocity of someone with nothing to lose. Because he knows if he wins or loses, there's no real way of knowing if he can make it home. But he's making sure that Arborius did not die in vain. As far as he knows, yeah, he may never go home. But he's going to make sure that Sib does not get lonely. He's not going to leave her alone. In fact, once they finally do end up winning the big boss battle, once they finally do save the princess, she does wonder, wait, who are you? He's a group clad in his armor, looking at Sif. All you can say is, I am the apprentice of Artorius, the Abyss Walker. Of course, she's like, wait, 
I didn't know he had an apprentice. Well, where is he? Just looking downcast along with Sif. Of course, she realizes, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Izugu, of course, upon her telling him that she'll let everyone know what he's done today. But no, I didn't do anything. Me and Seb didn't do this. Not alone. Artorius. This was his quest. His mission. And I'm proud to say that it has been completed. If you can promise me one thing, make sure that people know that Artorius didn't fail. That he succeeded. Whoa, wait, what about uh, fame, glory, all, gold, all that? What? Don't you want any of that? No. You, you, you don't understand. I, I don't want that at all. I saved you. I defeated that monster. All because of my master. He was... He, he, he's the real hero here. He's the only reason why I'm still standing. Me and Sif. Uh, oh. Well, uh... Where are you... What are you going to do now? I don't know. But... Yeah, all that matters is that, uh... Me and Sif... We're going to be alright. Won't we, uh, get you home? Princess. And that's how that ends. Once Izuku actually does in a final way home of course he didn't plan on bringing Sif with him so you can just imagine how shocked Sif is especially considering wow I, I can see the sun but what was really surprising is the sludge villain Wondering, wait, where the hell did that skinny kid go? Izuku seeing that. Like, no. no. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. This, this, you can't be serious. <sighs> so I am home. Well, that's gonna be interesting. I'm looking at the sludge villain. So this villain's morning way, you are that kid, but what the hell happened to you? Zuko so just raises his hand and sets the sludge villain ablaze. Sif, realizing, oh wait, this is an enemy, starts to go for the slash attacks. Zuko being battle hurt now, and especially having blood on his hands, so to speak. Yeah, he's trying to kill the slowest villain. At the very least, it takes a... What? A month or two to really pick up a habit? Let's just say that slowest villain was begging all might to take him to jail. Izuku has probably forgotten about all might as the number one hero. Only real hero in his eyes is Artorius right now. Of course, always is uh, okay, so good job. You know, you shouldn't be using the quirk. What? Uh, oh, oh, right. Fire. Oh. That's right. Fire. Yeah, I'm fire quirk. I, 
Sorry, I, I promise I won't do it again. Lord, you have to make yourself a great hero. Thank you. I, I know. As he is about to mount Sif, All Might is wondering, is that your dog? No. Sif, of course, taking offense to be calling the whole damn dog, starts growling at All Might. All Might trying to, okay, calm down. Izuku, well, she's my companion. And she's a good girl, right? Okay. As Izuku does a wire poem, he does realize, oh my god, I haven't had my mom's cooking in months. Um, I need, I need this. So, you can just imagine, as soon as Izuku did get home, he said he was starving. Inko, of course, uh, happy to feed her son. Just one problem. Uh, what's with the big wolf? Not to mention the armor and the sword. Is it, what is this, cosplay or something? Izuku not really having a good explanation. Yes. Precisely, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. Of course, Ingo is skeptical. Considering that stuff looks weird, really real. And as well as a few scrapes and bruises and maybe a splatter of a tomato sauce. But as you is able to convince her enough so she doesn't ask too many more questions. When it comes to eating, of course, Izuku, he starts eating like he's never seen food before. Sif, trying to eat Inko's cooking, of course is first skeptical. But that home cooking does <laughs> just hits different. Causing her to pretty much be more ravenous than Izuku. Of course, Izuku does had to point out the hypocrisy with Sif being somewhat distinguished acting at times. But at the end of the day, it was a, it was a good day. But Izuku just can't help the feeling that he, he just ended up having everything that happened to him for those months really happened and no one knows about it but him he well he doesn't even know if that world can be returned to and then he just wonders How is Sif going to adjust to this? How am I going to adjust back to civilization like this? As he does take off his armor, he sees all the scars he's accumulated. Just wondering, how would my mom react to seeing this? But he just decides to put a pin in that and go to sleep next to Sif. Having a nice fluffy bed after so long it really does the body good. Even though Sif does end up wanting to, you know, more freely find things to fight, possibly find a way back home to. If nothing else, check on Artorius' grave. Izuku's, Izuku knows deep down that Artorius is resting peacefully. But 
But these feelings, these just can't help but think of ways to possibly return. He's wondering. Okay, let me think. The broken pendant, I do still have it, don't I? I need to check everything. And probably do some more research on it. When he does start looking at the inscriptions and everything that has to do with it, he does end up saying, Okay, let me use the power of the internet. But as soon as he does, he notices something familiar. Not only is it a picture of the pendant, but there's an article on Artorius. And as well as his deeds for one of his greatest is saving the princess with the help of his great companion Sif as well as his first and only apprentice. Well as Izuku's reading on, he is worried like, oh my god, did am I gonna be name dropped? Luckily, no. The Sif is already been well known in that world. Izuku was luckily able to keep his name out of it. Of course, he's relieved, but also just like, wow, I can't believe we're famous. Hell, now that I think about it, I never did any research on when it comes to Artorias. But he was just a wiki search away. Ain't that something? Huh. Wait. Hmm. One of us a way to go back. Further. Maybe I could have. I'm looking back at Sif. It would be possible for us to go back just a bit further. No. Probably not. I don't know anything of that kind of power. As now we get to the whole 10 months training. Oh, yes, Izuku does it, don't you? attending school he does have to get a new uniform considering how much bulk he's accumulated as well as everyone wondering who are you and what are you doing with Izuku one thing is when Baku does try to step up to him and be a jerk Izuku is not taking that at all he drop kicks Bakugo and now reflex Bats for a sword he doesn't have anymore. And just sticks to socking him in the jaw. Everyone's wondering what got into you. They're not going to be a pushover anymore. I'm not going to take this abuse from someone I considered a friend. I just want to finish off the rest of my time in middle school. Then go to high school. That's all I want. So, yeah, no one really wants to mess with Izuku, and Bongo just has pride hurt. It's one thing for Izuku just to suddenly have a work and everything. But as far as I know, he is still quirkless. Considering he does end up still having a big ass great sword to train with. Yes, I'd say his strength has uh, rightfully accumulated. As far as magic goes, yeah, he has gotten better at healing magic. He's gotten better at pyromancy. If anything, those are the only ones he's 
ever thought he would actually ever need. And he's not wrong. At the very least, not for now. So, when it comes to finally the entrance exam, Izuku, he's had time to study. He does alright with the whole theoretical exam, of course. When it comes to the practical, he does not even think about waiting for somebody to say go. Because he down he knows. Heck, the bad guys aren't going to wait for a bell to ring before they attack you. Considering he's pretty much going barehanded, he does end up using fire. He does end up healing people. He ends up being strong enough to at the very least punch through concrete and dent metal. Considering he's barehanded, he can't really rip. <laughs> The robots all crazy, but well, at the very least he can use his environment not only for terrain like advantage, especially with the robots being surprisingly proportional to the enemies he's had to face. Yeah, thanks to him being very attuned to his surroundings, he's able to destroy robots left and right. Of course, everyone is wondering who is this guy. And when all my seasons, like he has healing powers too. Wait, you know him all right? <laughs> yeah, I I could say so. I I do, but I knew we had fire and some seemingly extensive combat training, but I didn't think he had a healing work. Huh. Is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, he, he might be the top of the you know, candidates right now. Hmm. True, he is helping people with his healing powers as well as getting rid of quite a few robots, but you know. Let's see how he does under pressure. And at least the zero pointer Nezu has. One thing is, Izuku, when he sees it, he's like, I fought worse. As he's not backing down from it, he takes a running stance and he dashes straight towards it. But then he realizes someone is trapped under rubble and he's. <laughs> Starting to think. Okay, what what do I do? Which which one do I pay? Do I fight or do I save? And that heroic instinct kicks in, and he ends up saving. Even though yes, he did want to show his strength. So it's better to save someone. All right, sure, they're safe. Yes, it was kind of disappointing. Like, man, I want to see what he can do to it. But all my reason, he passed. <laughs> you have the top spot. He, he passed. Let, let him in this school. He's earned it. Aizawa, put him in your class. Uh, okay. Fine, whatever. It's not like you uh, you need my permission or anything. Good. Of course, when Izuku does get his access letter or hollow disk, he is very much proud of himself. Even though he does wonder what am I going to do with Sif here and what is she going to do with me gone? This is when he gets an idea, something he didn't reconsider really before. Yeah, he may have registered Sip as, you know, his you know, pet, despite her protests. 
But he's trying to see if he can actually make it so she can go with him everywhere. If nothing else, you never know when you're going to need a leap on into action. And a big ass gray wolf can really come in handy. As for Sif, yes, though she does get training, yes, she does end up fighting and sparring with Izuku. What makes it hard for her to really adjust is that this world is kind of safer, despite the villain attacks and everything. It's safer and more relaxed compared to the environment she grew up in. Mixed in with the fact that the food is more nutritious, it's more available, you ain't got to worry about washing your back every second of every day and uh, no killing yeah you know her and Izuku almost went too far with this poor sludge villain yeah Izuku had to make sure she knew like yeah we can't kill people here at least we can't with people watching you can imagine if sees a loophole when it comes to that. You can imagine Izuku is worried about the potential speed bumps they might come across. Even though, yes, he would like to get his license. Having Sif around makes it so he doesn't really need one. Unless it's a boating license or helicopter type thing. Sif is one of the greatest all-terrain vehicles that don't include air and water. Especially because of her speed. If anything, when it comes to her registered work, it is a gigantification and longevity type quirk, as well as weapon mastery to make it seem like, yeah, she's special, and no, you can't have her. Izuku just trying his best to make sure he keeps his promise with Artorius, and Sif doing the same when it comes to patrolling. When Izuku is sleeping, but now say Izuku. When is time? And Izuku arrives at the class one A door. He's excited. He and Sif see that big ass door and he's like, "Oh my God, we have? Or do we have any giants in this class?" Him brushing the door wide open, and he's so excited, only to be so disappointed the fact that oh, they're all regular sized people. Oh well, can't win them all. When he does see Bakugo, he does get kind of upset, as well as Sif noticing this when she looks at the both of them. Of course, everyone wonders who brings their dog here. Izuku trying to keep Sif very calm. And as soon as Iwa does say, What the hell? Why do you. I have a permit. She can be with me. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Work apprehension test. Yeah, that goes it goes pretty damn easy. Though Bongo is shocked to see that Izuku does have more than one work. As well as that huge strength boost he's acquired. He does try to attack Izuku. Only thing is, Izuku and Sif jump his ass. 
So you can just imagine how shocked Bongo is to not only lose to Izuku twice, three times if you count the entrance exam, but he has a big ass wolf with him. And though, yes, as I did say, yeah, I was joking about expelling you, but keep that thing on a short lease, if you don't mind. Only isn't really peeking in on them when it comes to this part, but he is keeping an eye on Zuku and Sif. Wondering where do they get this about instinct from what kind of life have they been going through causing him to actually look more into Izuku's backstory Barn doing enough research he's just wondering wait he was diagnosed quirkless this whole time he was quirkless but what was that fire and the that healing and the strength, what, what was that? Making him more suspicious of Izuku. My constant uh, heroes versus villains. Of course, Izuku decides, can Sif just be my partner? Everyone looking at him, like, you serious? Like, yeah. Like, um... I, I mean, she's not a student. Uh, trust me. She's smart enough. Um, okay. As for <laughs> as a villain team, yeah, it's going to stay safe. It's going to be Bongo and Ida. Of course, Bongo does have some PTSD over his losses, but he still thinks that he can do something. Considering he's souped up and he's ready to go. Ida does try to get him to make a plan. And now. Bongo just has to prove himself. This does not end up going well for poor Bakugo Katsuki. As you can imagine. To the point where, yeah. Izuku isn't just... Fighting Bakugo, he's humiliating him. Well, he sends Sif off to secure the bomb. He and Bakugo are fighting bare knuckle. Well, Izuku barehanded while Bakugo is using his explosions. Considering how much Izuku has actually been through, all Bakugo's explosions. Are really doing is burning and singeing his costume and his hair. Which, when people do see the amount of damage Izuku has accumulated on his body, they wonder what the hell did he go through to get that much battle damage? What are these claw marks? What? Is that a sword slash on his back? All my seeing this is horrified. Wondering who did this to him. And you can imagine. Yeah, when Sip does end up <laughs> getting the bomb and they win. All my does pull Yuzuku aside. Telling him that. Do you need to talk to somebody? Do, do, do we need uh, to have a home visit? It, of course, he's a group being a dumbass. Okay, catch the hints. So, like, is someone hurting you at home? Is it good? Of course, he's no, 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 no. This is from training. That, that's all this is. My mom doesn't even know about what? Oh no, I forgot. Yeah, we we are having a parent teaching teacher conference tomorrow. And 
Inko being told about her son's uh, scars and injuries, or well, past injuries. She is in pure hysterics. She is in tears, wondering, why would you do this to yourself? Of course, Izuku can't really tell her that he traveled back in time, got trained by the greatest knight, as well as saved a princess and killed ugh, a lot. <laughs> I can just imagine how terrified she would be then. So he just pretty much hears the scolding of a lifetime. He said, oh, this is so much better than just telling them everything I went through. So if, of course, she doesn't really get unscathed in this either, considering the claw marks do match her claws. But then they start to really dive deep into these wounds and notes. Wait, some of these are fresh. Inko, looking at Sif, you hurt my son. Sif is strangely concerned. And Izuku starts feeling a murderous intent coming off his own mother that he didn't think was possible. And she was like, Mom, this was my idea. We were training. That is it. <sighs> Fine. You can train all you want. Just make sure you don't end up with too many more scars. And that is the end of that terrible circumstance. But now it's late night. He said he was sleeping. Sif, being the good girl she is, ends up tiptoeing out once again. Just to find something to scratch this itch for Belle that she's acquired. She's worried she's going to go soft, so that she won't be able to protect Izuku anymore. At least, that is one of her fears. She can tell Izuku was trained hard to keep his promise to victorious. But she has to make sure she can keep her side of the bargain as well. So... You can just imagine there are fewer criminals on the streets. Only time. Thing is, this time, this night, yeah, she gets caught. Zuru has always been suspicious of Osef. Thanks to his enhanced senses. He does know slight changes. One time he did notice that she was gone. He thought, mm, maybe she just went to the toilet, going back to sleep. But then when he notices how she is seemingly exhausted, nah, I have to know what you were doing. So once she kills another villain, she knows his Izuku is right there and wondering, what are you doing? And you can imagine they have a heart to heart. And Izuku actually does understand why she's doing this. At the very least, if they're going to do this, Izuku just raising his hand. There's a flame which envelops his arm. We're gonna do this right as he burns the bodies. See, before, yes, there was a little uh, rumor of someone 
dispatching villains, which even added to Izuku's curiosities. But this time, he's making sure it's like, yeah, if we're doing this, we are not getting caught. Sif, of course, she's all happy to have some help. Izuku, he's just worried about making sure that no one finds this out at all. Because, yeah, for one, vigilante work is illegal. And two, this is not only a serious crime, it is very incriminating if someone sees him you know, on-site cremations. So now, it's time for USJ. Everyone does ask about Sif, and they do ask about Izuku's not only fire, but also healing abilities. Well, I don't know the full extent of my healing. I mean, yeah, I can heal from pretty much anything. It really just depends. Huh. I've never gotten too hurt. Explain. Like, I'm not sure if I can redo an arm or anything, because that's never happened before. But at the very least, I know I'll be able to keep fighting as long as I have magic in, in my system. Wait, what? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I have a uh, uh, stamina. Yeah. Oh, so that's the trade-off. Stamina? Yeah. Because Warren just said magic. Shut up, Janky. Why? I, I can't be the only one to heard. You must have misheard. <laughs> I, uh, maybe I did. He's a good, like, I can't believe that. Thank you, everybody. That just came in clutch. And, yeah. Of course, All Might is not there. As I was wondering, seriously? So he can heal. You just don't know the full powers of it. Interesting. The USJ goes similar to Ken. One thing is, Izuku notices the air is different. He can smell like, yeah, someone else is here. Sif, she's ready to fight and she's ready to rip some throats out. Only thing is, Aizawa. He does end up stopping them from going in full force. Only until the whole separation begins. Where, yes, Izuku is sent to the, the war zone with Suimeda. One thing is, Sif is there with him. And when it comes to, to arriving back on shore, Izuku notices how Aizawa is heavily injured. And he does notice how Froppy is just about to get, you know, dusted. So his bow is he's kick in. And he takes out a dagger he's hidden. And he cuts off Shigaraki's hand. Everyone is shocked at this. Nomu just arrived before Izuku could finish the job and he backhands Izuku. And you can imagine Sif, she is not happy about this. Though yes, Izuku can heal himself. Him getting hurt is a no-go for her. So she engages with the Nomu while Shikaraki is screaming his ass off. Of course, probably Mineta wondering what the hell, where did that knife come from? As I was wondering, did he really just pull out a knife out of nowhere just to... Nah, there's more to this kid than he's 
telling us when it comes to Sif and Nanomu, yeah, though Sif does have slashing and biting attacks. Because, of course, Izuku can let her drink her sword. It does actually work pretty well against Nobu. Because, hey, you don't have to worry about shock absorption. You know, and as long as Sif is fast enough, the healing eh, doesn't really uh, help much if, if it's not uh, fast enough. So once he goes back in the fight, he goes off on the Nomu with Sif. And they're wondering, what the hell? Did he, has he been in a in a real life fight like this before? He's, for some reason, he's too good. And this is around the time when All Might does step in. He does find out where everything has been going on. He sees Sif and Izuku fighting this Nomu thing. And though, yes, they're not really doing too much damage, they're doing enough to know that the Nomu is... Eh, he's hanging in there. But this is when All Might does in up doing them bunch of punches. When he does get stabbed inside, yes, he knows the pain, the grimaces on his face. The I gotta save him. And Shiraki is not quick to try to stop Izuku interfering because he's like, okay, he's just gonna die along with All Might. Plus, he only has one arm left. So, you <laughs> definitely don't want to wish that again. So, what really surprises them is when Izuku climbs on the All Might's back. Everyone is wondering, wait, what are you doing? Until they see this golden glow just envelop Izuku and All Might. You know, it's like All Might start to breathe better. And he thanks Izuku and tells him to hang on tight. Well, he continues the barrage of punches with the Nomu. And it is glorious. Even though Izuku is in trouble to an extent when it comes to interfering with the All Might's fight, I can't deny he got some results. In fact, All Might does end up being him in the infirmary with Recovery Girl, and they do end up thanking him. And this is when All Might does debuff. But it's obviously different from what he's used to. For some reason, his eyes are starting to be more... Mm -hmm. uh, lack of a better word. Distinguished or... More noticeable. I stand with the fact that, yes, he isn't his big-ass buff self. Yeah, he still got some muscle on him. So he does end up asking Izuku, how strong is your healing powers really? If anything, Recovery Girl is definitely curious on how he got such a advanced healing quirk. Izuku definitely not one to tell them. Also, like, okay, I feel like I... They... Showed me a weaker side of all my... That's... Hmm. Screw it, I'll tell them something. But he does explain how he grew up forkless. Till one day, during a villain attack, a sludge villain... He did awaken his quirk. But All Might obviously starts to question him. Because when All Might saw Izuku, he was fighting like he's done this before. When it comes to Slipville. 
Not to mention, he's only seen Izuku use his healing during the test. And then he's like, Alright, son. What else are you hiding from us? <laughs> <laughs> 